Hey, how's it going? Um, another another little micro lesson today. Today is on, I have a guitar in my hands, so it's obviously about the guitar. And I thought I'd start off with, uh, do something kind of super basic today, and that is the parts of the guitar and what I can tell you about them, right? Um, I've picked an electric guitar, um, and this is a specific type of guitar. And we'll just sort of go over the parts and where, and where we'll where I can, I'll sort of involve us in talking about uh, how they apply to the acoustic guitar as well. Okay, so here is an electric guitar. Uh, I'm going to start here at what is essentially the bottom of the guitar. Why is it the bottom of the guitar? It gets very confusing for people. But we're going to talk about this part of the guitar. And this part is called the head, which is short for headstock. Um, they come in two varieties. I'm going to just Put it at an angle that way so you can see it. This is an off-axis one, so that when the uh, strings are on the on the uh, these pegs here, we'll talk about those. It uh, tilts back and puts pressure on this part here. So let's talk about all these parts. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. So on the side here, we have these devices that we use for tuning the guitar. And they come a variety of names. Uh, the, I think one of the original names was tuning pegs. Uh, and they're still called that by a lot of people. And the reason they're called uh, tuning pegs is because originally they were actual pegs, like we still see on violins. So conical shaped, uh, you would sort of pull them out a little bit to get them loose, and then you tune the guitar and jam it back in. Uh, to this day, violins, uh, violas, and cellos still use them, but they also will have like micro tuners because it's a really crappy way of tuning a string. It's not very accurate. You can get you know only so close. But they used to actually be pegs that went in a hole and you jam them in to sort of hold them in place. Uh, since those days are gone, uh, we have simpler uh, mechanisms. On, um, on this guitar, we have these, they're backed up this way, and uh, they got, got, got called early on, they got called Machine Heads, which is the name of Deep Purple's uh, most famous album, and there's actually a band that called themselves Machine Head. Uh, and, uh, and so th that's what they are. Uh, I'll take another guitar here. Let's put this one in Stanbury. Yeah. I'm going to bring it really close to the camera. And you can see uh, that they look like simple machines with cogs and a spiral. And, uh, and so they were called machine heads. Uh, because of their similarity to the end of a key, that part that you hold on a key, they sometimes are called tuning keys. But hey, you know what I like to call them? I like to call things by what they do. Right? Real basic idea. I just hold them the tuners. Right? Not to be confused with a clip-on tuner that you use to, to help you tune a guitar or an inline tuner. Let's just call them tuners. We do that to tune the guitar. Okay, that's a lot on just that, on the tuners. Here we have next is the nut. The nut is has uh, cuts in it so that the strings run through. This is one of those things I don't know why they call that. The headstock was the, the part that you know kind of went in the vise and. It's sort of like a head, and when we talk about the other parts of the, of the guitar, it'll make sense why we call this the head. The nut, I haven't been able to find uh, a good authoritative source on why it's called the nut, but that's sort of where the string starts. Behind here, this, it's a cool sound, but we don't use that part of the guitar, and we use it from going up that way. Okay. Now, if this is the head, there we go. I'm going to skip past that to this thing called the body. This is the body of the guitar. On an electric guitar, it serves a much different purpose than it does on acoustic guitar. I'm going to talk about that, of course, as well. Um, we have the upper and lower bout, yeah, which is these humps on, on the guitar. Uh, this is a cutaway. Uh, it's a black guitar, so you can't really see the black pickups that are on the body. But we'll talk about that a little later. Right now, I want to talk about the part that goes between the body and the head. And we call that the neck. And that makes sense. We call this the body guitar. You can see that on in, in some ways it's like the shoulder waist and hips of a human, and we have the head, so this makes perfect sense to call this the neck. Uh, if I turn the guitar sideways, you can see the two parts to it. There's the part that's the actual physical neck that it connects to the headstock, and there's a part that is on, laid on top of it here, which is called the fingerboard. It's called the fingerboard because we put our fingers on it. There you go. Embedded in the fingerboard are pieces of wire called fret wire, uh, and in between these pieces of uh, wire are where we put our fingers to get different notes on the guitar. So they used to be called stops because that's what you did on woodwind instruments was you put your fingers over the holes to stop uh, the air from coming out. And when we play two notes on the guitar, it's sometimes called a double stop because we're stopping two notes. 
fancy stuff. Uh, so this entire area is like considered like the fret space, fret area, uh, the fret wire. So when, so when we, but when we go to play the guitar, we put our finger somewhere inside this area. We will still get a note. The biggest deal uh, about that and any teacher will tell you this, is that you need to have your fingers close to the fret without going over. This is different for bass. On bass, you can actually put your finger on the fret because the frets are so large. But the closer you are, the less I have to press, you have to press down, and the uh, nicer the sound is. I press back here, I have to press harder, and it gets a little sharp, okay? So then we have the body of the guitar. Now, this is one of the places where it becomes very different. And so on this body of this guitar, we have two pickups. We have the front pickup, which is called the neck pickup, rather than calling it the, you know, and this is the bridge pickup, rather than calling it the front and back pickup, because why are we going to call this the back, okay? But you can't, it's very common to call this the, the back pickup, but when there's two pickups, the one that's at the end, bottom of the neck, and the one that's near the bridge, bridge pickup, neck pickup. This comes with a selector. Uh, on Les Pauls, towards you, it's a little confusing, on Les Pauls, towards you is the neck pickup and away from you is the bridge pickup. On Les Paul Gibsons, they'll say, it'll actually say rhythm and lead. That's not exactly accurate. You can play leads with the front pickup and some cool rhythms with the back. It's just something they did back in the 50s and nobody's ever changed it. But on this guitar, I don't know if it came this way or I kind of just loosened it and made it so that it goes in the direction of the pickup. So when I push it forward like this, it's the front pickup. When I push it back, it's the back pickup. Every guitar after that point changes, which is why a lot of times it's, it's nice to talk about the parts of the guitar when you're using an acoustic guitar, because with an electric guitar, this one has just it has just two knobs and one switch. But if I was to go get another, another guitar, so I pick up this guitar, and uh, it's a little more visible what's going on here, but I have four knobs, right? So on that, the black guitar, the front knob was for the volume, and the back knob was for the tone, which is really what we call a treble roll-off. This one does the same thing, but we have, we have the controls for the neck pickup here and uh, um, bridge pickup back here, right? And again, nobody went to the, from the same idea, the pickup going forward, going back that way. So that has four knobs, that has two knobs, right? So that is, so that's how the electric guitar is at parts. And the parts of the acoustic guitar are very similar. This is still the head, this is still the tuners, this is still the nut, why is it called that? This is still the neck, fingerboard, frets. This is still the body of the guitar with the upper and lower bouts and the, and the cutaway. Uh, and one place that is similar between the electric guitars and the acoustic guitars is this part here, which is called the bridge. You can sort of see, yeah, bridge, you know, going over a bridge. Uh, okay, you can sort of see how that word is. And then this, on this one, on an acoustic guitar, it's usually one piece of, nowadays, it's one piece of high-density plastic, sometimes camel bone. In the old days, it used to be ivory. Obviously, we don't do that anymore. Uh, some people use graphite on that guitar I just showed you. It's actually rosewood. On the electric guitar, it's some it's stainless steel uh, with individual um, parts to it individual parts to that saddle. So the strings ride in the saddle, the saddle goes over the bridge. You can see how those words work out. Okay, now with electric guitar, we know that we plug it in and play it through some sort of amplification system and we can hear an acoustic guitar, although this one uh, has a whole system that I can plug it in. It is, a, I didn't even tune this, so forgiveness in advance. And not bad. Um, but we can hear this guitar based on this thing called the soundboard. Now, and this is called the sound hole. So the, the, the myth is that the sound comes out of the hole, but you can hear it, even if I cover that up, I'm not going to. So how an acoustic guitar works is a, a little bit different. And I wish I had brought home, I'm meant to bring, bring home my tuning fork. I don't, all right, different shirt, different pants. Uh, so I started that other video and I made mention of, I think, um, wanting to bring my tuning fork uh, with me to show you the properties of the soundboard. And you know what? I went and got my, uh, this is a couple days later, and I went and got a tuning fork. Um, I used to have two, I seem to have lost one. I don't use, the, I don't use them as much anymore. Um, history of the tuning fork. Uh, you could buy them. Typically you buy them in their A440 and you'd, you'd hit them against something and then you could listen to it and tune your instrument. Uh, and we'll talk about how we used to do that as part of teaching you about the properties of the soundboard. All right, so uh, I have here my an acoustic guitar. Is it in tune? This is a, a unique guitar. This is a baritone seven-string guitar. Um, 
so not your garden variety uh, instrument uh, for sure. But having said that, it'll still work uh, for our uh, purposes. I might have even been using this in the previous video. I don't even remember. It's like a couple of days ago. Okay. So as I was saying, the sound of the guitar comes from the wood itself vibrating. And the soundboard is the one that produces the most because you have the guitar against your chest. You have your arm on top of the guitar like that. So this is the one that uh, uh, resonates. So what's happening is the string is resonating. It's vibrating through the saddle, through the bridge, through the sound uh, soundboard. And so I'm going to demonstrate that with my tuning fork. All right, and this was a way that people uh, tune for a long time. We could get a quiet room, and I'll show you another thing about this. Okay, so first thing is I'm going to bang it against uh, my guitar amp. Now you can't hear that. I can hear it when I put it up to my ear, and I'm going to put it up to the camera, see if you hear it better that way. But right up there, I don't know if you can hear it that way. It's pretty quiet. All righty, so it makes almost no noise of its own. It has almost no volume, but I'm going to... Put it on my guitar. All right, I'm gonna also move it closer to the. To the um, I'm gonna move it closer to the speaker too, as well as the microphone here, and I'll demonstrate it. And see how that's crazy, right? So what's some basic principles of sound and sound transference, and about the way that sound actually travels faster through solid objects than it does through the air, which is that's that's crazy. It makes no sense to us, but that's the way it works. So this solid object that vibrates, I touch it to the, the solid object of the guitar and the actual soundboard turns this from being inaudible, uh, unless you have it here, inaudible to being actually fairly loud. All right, not only that, um, but the, the uh, tuning fork will also make other things go. I don't know if you're gonna be able, the mic's gonna be able to pick it up, but I'm gonna just, I'm gonna bang it, put it on my desk. My desk is resonating, right? And let's see, I'm gonna just actually touch it to the camera itself, see what happens, this could be goofy. I don't, I don't know if that did anything, I could kind of hear it louder through the plastic, right? And that's like a really kind of cool, sciencey kind of crossover in, in learning the guitar. Now, if you're a guitar teacher, you can go out and buy one of these things, they're getting harder and harder to find. Uh, and you can sort of demonstrate that as a sort of super cool Thing. And as a guitar student, you're learning, you know, how that how the thing actually works. I mean, it's just a box with a stick and wires on it. Well, why can we do so many cool things with it? Well, anything of the guitar. But what happens is that we play the notes on, play the strings on the guitar. We're hearing the strings a little bit, uh, which if, you, if I went back and got the other, if you remember when I played that solid body guitar, I kind of, you know, I strung the strings a bit and you could kind of hear it but obviously much louder. So what's happening is it's vibration. So the vibrations of the strings that are contacting the guitar, the nut well, on the open strings, and always at the bridge and saddle down here, are transmitted to the soundboard. The soundboard vibrates, and that's what we're actually hearing when we hear the acoustic guitar. We're not hearing the hole, because the hole's not gonna make any sound. We're not hearing the strings per se. We're hearing the vibration of the strings amplified by the wood. It's actually kind of cool when you think about it that way. Now, uh, what's that sound hole for? Well, the sound hole is, um, does give us a little bit more um, of the acoustic properties of the guitar. And uh, by the way, the whole thing vibrates, but when you're holding it like this, like here's what it sounds like when I do this. I don't, I don't think this mic's gonna pick it up in here. I'm gonna take my hand off it and do the same thing. It's a little bit louder because now the top is vibrating, uh, the sides are vibrating and I've got it away from my body and this part's vibrating. But typically we would hold the guitar and we would be muffling. And then when I play it out here like this, I don't know if that mic, that mic in that camera is not very sophisticated. So you probably not be able to hear the difference. Having said that though, um, so this part is vibrating and we call it the soundboard. And what's happening is it's vibrating and it's vibrating out this way. And inside the guitar, it's vibrating down this way <clears throat> and bouncing off the back of the guitar and some of that sound <clears throat> anywhere from 25 to maybe 40 percent of the sound is reflected off the back and can, some of it can get out of the sound hole and it does make a difference um, <clears throat> i've played guitars with no sound hole or older type guitars with the with the f holes the violin style holes on them and they uh they're not quite as loud the, the hole is um 
a compromise because we're hearing most of the sound from the sound board. If we open up the hole bigger to hear more sound coming from the guitar, we have less soundboard overall, right? So, so the sound of the, the size of this, this the sound hole is one of those things that uh, luthiers, people who are designing guitars and building guitars, have to have to take into account uh, into, uh, into into consideration. How we on the back of uh, bottom of every guitar except a closet guitar is a strap button. On electric guitars, they have them. Uh, we'll do another lesson about uh, straps, but if you're sitting, sitting there going, oh, I can't uh, uh, play the guitar is too hard, I need a strap, go to the, uh, uh, depends on where you found this video. If you found it on YouTube, you can look for my lesson on how to hold a guitar. If you're at my WinnipegGuitarLessonsSite.com, you can look under, under the Guitar lesson section uh, and find a Lesson 2, which is how to hold a guitar. Because as long as you're sitting down, you don't really need a strap for your guitar. Straps are almost exclusively uh, for playing the guitar when you are standing up and so on and so forth. So, head, stock, tuners, and all those other names, the nut, the neck, the fingerboard, the frets, the body, the sound hole, and the bridge and saddle. On the electric guitar, we also add in the pickups and the tone and volume knobs as well as the uh, pickup selector. All right, so those are the parts of the guitar. Um, other than the strings, right? well, we talked about the strings. Everybody knows the strings. That's what they're called. They're not called the wires or anything like that. All right, uh, I think that's everything. And uh, and if it, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, uh, write me, riversmusic at gmail dot com. Uh, the info is on the page in the link and uh, the description wherever you happen to find this video. And have a great day.